Hey, we're First to Eleven. And you're checking out the Bottom Line Podcast. Bottom Line Podcast presented by Anchor.fm, your home for sports and entertainment talk. Jimmy Finesse, Mr. Taco with you, a.k.a. Austin Myers. We hope you are well. This is it. The end of 2021. Finally? <laughs> I say finally because, God, the past couple of years have been stressful as hell. But we hope you're doing well. As always, thank you so much for taking some time out of you today. Take a listen. Much appreciate it. As always, Hit us up on all social media, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, at Bottom Line WMCX. And don't forget to use hashtag Bottom Line Austin. This is it, my man. The end of the year is here. How's everything with you, man? Everything's great other than this cold-ass weather we've been having. Oh, <laughs> tell me about it. It's so- I don't, listen, I don't want to hear it from you. We've had snow the last two days. Ooh. It's disgusting. Ooh. That's a big oof. <laughs> Oh, we're, all we've all we've had here in Jersey is rain and cloudy skies. <laughs> and then we're supposed to get another six to twelve inches on Saturday. Oh, ouch! On at least, day. at least I don't work. Well, yeah, there you go. I'm you can staying. At least, you can I'm at least enjoy the snow. I'm gonna <laughs> stay inside. I'm gonna <laughs> find have me a nice beverage. Yeah. Pretty much that that's how it's gonna go. <laughs> uh, I, let's not re- let's not forget our stream on New Year's Day, too. <laughs> yes, more info about that in a little bit. But before we get started with today's episode, make sure you hit that subscribe button if you're watching on YouTube and hit that bell so you don't miss an episode and subscribe on all audio platforms, include Jimmy when searching for this podcast. All right. So since it's the end of 2021 and we are heading towards 2022, Austin and I figured let's reflect a little bit on this year for us and for the podcast, because in all reality, this podcast has grown in more ways that we can imagine. And we'd be reminisced if, if we didn't say thank you so, so much for everything that you have done, whether it be sharing this podcast, listening, just anything, anything you do to support us really means the world. So Thank you so, so much for everything that you've done, not just this year, for the past couple of years as well. So with that being said, Austin, I don't know if you want to take the floor first. Uh, what's been, uh, what do you think have been uh, the biggest moments for us so far? I think, I honestly think one of our top moments, and I'm going to have to look at the official date on this, <laughs> but please hold. Stand by for dates. And while Austin's getting a date, he did mention um, our new watch party date. That is correct. We will be live streaming the Winter Classic on New Year's Day at 7 p.m. Eastern time, uh, 7.05 puck drop. So make sure you tune in our, on our YouTube channel. So, again, 7 p.m. Eastern time on New Year's Day. It's going to be a heck of a game. Minnesota Wild against the St. Louis Blues. A bit of a unusual winter classic but even still it should be a, it should be a fun one we say that's unusual until we until we see the rumors for next year <laughs> that's true I, that's true i've already seen rumors for next year's and i don't know no, that, that, no you're right you're right i don't think we want to talk about that because <laughs> thinking about thinking about it in my head just slowly starts to hurt more and more true true <laughs> all right so i think one of my biggest dates was february 12th February 12th of 2021. Okay. And, and I believe this, this episode was called 
welcoming the new guy. Yes, that was the day you came aboard. Yes. <laughs> I was just about to say, if I'm not mistaken, you did come on board that day. And that was the day, uh, I think a couple days after that. No, I'm sorry. Um, A month after that, you had our first interview with Neil and I, and that would happen to be with Concrete Castles, a.k.a. First 211. And Ooh. I get it. We all have our nerves. And believe me, I still get as nervous as anybody. <laughs> but... In all seriousness, I think all three of us did a fantastic job with that interview. If I if I do oh, I say did. so myself, oh, and the fact oh, I that think so too, yeah, and the fact that they just constantly say yes to coming on this show and talking to us really does mean the world. And I'm, we're just really, really thankful that um that we have this this friendship with this band that really is it really is starting to come into their own. Man, I, I'm I'm telling you right now. First two eleven and Concrete Castles are going places in 2022. Oh, just oh, yeah. you wait. Oh, yeah. But, yeah, I, I, dude, I can't believe it's already been a, almost a year since you've, since yeah, you've no, come no. on, the, on the show. I mean, it really is, it really yeah. is unreal. But I'll, I'll tell you this. It's been one hell of a year. I mean, we, I mean we, we all have our – we've all had our crazy shenanigans on this show. But, hey, you know what? We made the most of it, and uh, – I know we'll uh, continue to make the most of it for hopefully many more years to come. As uh, again, if you're not watching on YouTube, Austin's uh, camera does not want to have it today. He's it's just like, nope, I want to stay in this position here. But no, I I mean we have all had our moments, and the fact that it's been a year it just proves that time flies when you're having fun. Hell yeah, man! Couldn't have said that any better. Um, I think another big moment for me is. I believe this was the second interview that you had with us when Reality Suite came on the show. And it was actually our first time talking to them. We were first introduced to them that day. I think that was in, that was over the summer, I believe, correct? I believe, if, if I'm not mistaken, that was sometime in May or June. I, I, it, was, it was definitely over the summer. But yeah, those guys... Uh, a local band right here from uh, New Jersey, where I am. If you haven't heard of them, I highly suggest you go. That was June they 17th. Fantastic. What's that, Austin? June the 17th. June 17th it was. Okay, thank you. But, yeah, those guys are super nice. But the one thing that Austin and many others have pointed out to me is that there were a few audio issues on their end, and we do sincerely apologize about that. Um, I did try to fix that. Mm-hmm. to the best of my ability but hey none of us are perfect so perfect, perfect. anyway but either way those guys are really really nice and uh we uh we, we may have, have we, we may, may have, have something some going news. on with them again so stay tuned uh, future uh, future, uh, future uh, announcement future to come stuff. yep <laughs> yeah. we'll see I, we'll see that one was fun though that no it they, was it was really the, the, and it really surprised me well not really surprised me but it really, really boggled me how funny they are. Oh my god, <laughs> they are—they're so, probably one of the funniest bands I've ever talked to in my life. I mean, the, the jokes they oh crack are unbelievable. Some somewhere in my uh, I, somewhere around here, I have a video of them saying they they would only do another interview if Taco was there. <laughs> I do remember them saying that. So, yes, that was a win in my books. And, uh, <laughs> second second interview here and. They they still they wanted the taco around so <laughs> hey they they love you man they absolutely love you <laughs> that's so. a good thing <laughs> yes but yeah I think um I think another big moment for me I, personally I, 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 oh, no no go ahead go ahead Austin I'm sorry I was gonna but, I was gonna say I think and personally one of my favorites was our episode with the sweethearts ah yes uh, our very uh, good friends uh, yes. meg and shannon from the slapshot sweethearts yeah that was that, that was fun. really really fun <laughs> fun time fun times i mean especially because it's the same thing it seems like it's the same thing every time when you <laughs> when you bring people onto the show i just start to hear about them and they turned out to be some of the coolest people ever and i go on and i'll support you know pop into their chats and i'll be like hey guys just hanging out for a little bit. And I mean, everybody that we've met is so down to earth that it's just like, don't even worry about it. <laughs> no, you're, you're, 
you're hundred percent right on that. I mean, and again, the fact that we have these friendships with these people really is really is a blessing to us. And, you know, if you would have told me that we would have been friends with these people, I would have said you were crazy in all seriousness, but we do. And again, thanks to that. And a couple of other things that happened on this show. I mean, we've grown in more ways than one, not just for this show, but we as individuals also have, grown as well i mean we've learned we've learned a whole lot this year and uh, we'll continue to learn as we grow and you know bigger bigger things are going to happen and uh i think i think another uh big moment as to where this podcast has grown for me personally is when i started uh the one-on-one series and don't worry there will be more content coming from that very very soon i'm reaching out to as many people as possible so stay tuned for one-on-one announcements um, but yeah, I decided to, uh, kick off the one-on-one series with who else first to 11. I did Audra first. I did, um, I believe I did Matt next and then it was Ryan and then it was Sam. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, the fact that I've been able to get more inside info, um, one-on-one about what goes on behind the scenes of their work is incredible. And one episode I did in particular was when I interviewed uh, Violet Orlandi. And if you don't know who she is, go check oh, her out. Oh, God. Go if check you, her out. She is. Don't... Oh, God. If you don't know who Violet is, have you been listening yeah. under a rock? <laughs> I mean, have, you, have you been listening to this show? Have, no. you, have, you, been, have you been living under a rock? For the last yeah, yeah, years? pretty much. <laughs> oh, my God. But listen, at the time of this recording, my episode with Violet, has over 9,300 views and counting. That is, that is absolutely mind-blowing to me. The fact that that many people care absolutely was like, damn, like, I, I got to do more of these. Mm-hmm. Hey, maybe we'll have Violet back on again real soon. Maybe. Uh... Jesus, don't say that. <laughs> I said maybe. I don't know. I, I don't. I can't confirm anything yet. But I said maybe. So stay tuned oh, for Lord. any potential announcements imagine. there. I could only imagine. But no. But no. In, in all seriousness, the one on one series has been a huge hit. And thank you again to those who have uh, supported that. And the last one I did um, was with uh, Brooke Surgeoner, and that interview was really really fun. And <laughs> Just she, she's just she's just so bubbly and down to earth that you really can't help. But I mean that as she has a bubbly personality, which is a yeah, really really yeah, good. Oh yeah, she does. She's just so much fun to talk to, and of course she's she's friends with uh, with First to Eleven, so there's a connection there. Um, but listen again, that series has been a huge hit. So thank you again to those who have supported that, and uh, to find out more info about one on one. Um, episodes just keep following us on social media app. I don't like WMCX. I'll post more announcements on there uh, very, very soon. Um, Austin, what's another big moment for you? Big, mo- bigger moments for me was teaching you all about some of these uh, topics we've had on the show. Oh, you're talking NASCAR and stuff? The, and the Daytona 500 episode, <laughs> the Indy 500 episode. Those are cool. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I, yeah. I enjoyed teaching you guys what you needed to know, and we had a, we played our little games. Uh, Neil decided to have his talk about milk. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about that. Oh my god! <laughs> like, like which which milk is everybody gonna drink at the end yeah, of the race? Like, there's like freaking YooHoo. There's chocolate yeah, milk. There's chocolate whole milk, milk. Whole milk. Buttermilk, all that. I think thing. I think almond milk was in the was in the conversation. Was I yeah, was I right? I think so. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, if we, we we like to have our fun here, but no, yeah. I mean, look, you're obviously more of the racing guy than Neil and I are, and you know, it's not that I don't, it's not that I don't hate it because I don't hate it. It's just something that I couldn't really get into as far as like events are concerned mm-hmm. do i do i still find it exciting absolutely i do so it's just something i'm, I'm gonna have to watch more consistently in order to uh, get myself familiar with what's going on but i do know i do know some of the famous racers i do know who dale earnhardt is obviously the well, late well, yeah, Dale Earnhardt. well, well yeah everybody knows who dale earnhardt is. i know dale earnhardt jr 
I know oh, yeah. Danica well, Patrick, uh, Bubba, Bubba Wallace. Bubba. <laughs> um, first African American. Uh, Kyle, Kyle, Kyle Bush, I believe, right? Kyle Bush is another one. Okay, that, that's what I thought. Okay. Bubba Wallace, first African American driver to win a race after Wendell. Yeah, Trump. yeah, that's it, uh, that, that was a big part. Of, uh, yeah, big very, part very big moment. accomplishment. Absolutely. Another big moment, and this was this is more recently actually, um, is when we uh, started doing watch parties, and no, uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, and we we are doing more, hence why we're doing the Winter Classic stream, but um, yeah, doing watch parties. Little did I know, they're a terrific way to connect with fans, man. I mean, they, they just come in, like, they, they come in they they ask come in questions. Ways. They want to know you better. They want to know what's going on. We give a general play-by-play, -play, and it, it's so much fun to go live. It really, really is. It, it definitely is a different feel than doing what, we, what we're doing here, where it's just record the video, edit it, get it out. Like, with with our live streams we know they're unedited they're they're going up <laughs> right away and we're like okay yeah, we, pretty, we pretty much it. pretty much what you see is what you get when exactly. we go live and we we're sorry we can't change that but hey we're humans <laughs> exactly uh but but no in, in all seriousness though live streaming is a blast we can't wait to do more of them uh this upcoming year starting with again the winter classic, winter classic. blues and wild 7 p.m. Eastern time on New Year's Day. So for more announcements on that, stay tuned. Mm -hmm. Um, Austin, yeah. you're next. What's up even for you? Though, even though the fact is that I dropped the announcement last night. <laughs> yes, you did. <laughs> yes, you did on your I own personal Insta. And by the way, please go follow him at the Mr. Taco BLP if you want updates from him personally. Go follow the Twitter too, because I've been a busy, busy man with Twitter. Yes. Yes, you have. I think uh, oh. this hasn't happened in a while, but when you started Top Shelf with Taco, that was also a big hit. Yeah, we kind of we kind of scrapped that after a while because it, I yeah came to, I came to you and Neil and I said I want to be with you guys. I don't want to sit there and I don't I don't want to sit there by myself and not be able to have things bounce off of people and be like, hey, yeah, it's more interaction. It makes it not only does it make it easier to me, but it makes it easier on y'all too. Yeah, no, you're 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 100 right. Anything to make it easier on the three of us would be would be absolutely fantastic. But um, mm -hmm. I do have one more in particular that I have as far as uh, podcast standards. Um, it's it was when um Neil and I had uh first two eleven on when they reached one million subscribers, and that was the beginning of January, mm -hmm. and we ended up pulling oh, that, off. That was the that was the one where you had. Scene. Yeah, uh, that was when we pulled off that, the ultimate that was, surprise. That was the episode before I came on. Yes, I it was. I, yes, I remember, it was. I remember being so upset because I I wanted to be there for that one, and then I saw what happened, and I was so upset. I was like, "No, that could have been my first episode. What the <laughs> hell?" And then, and then I mean, later on down the road, you see what happened. Yeah. And then, and then you you got to have a conversation with them as Concrete Castles, and now look where we are now. <laughs> yep, look where we're at now. We're uh, we're sitting we're sitting pretty at a uh, 151 subscribers on YouTube. Yeah, I, yeah, that's another thing I was gonna say. We we definitely grown in subscribers on YouTube what, throughout the past year. I know it may not seem like much, but for us, again, we don't care how many people subscribe to us as long as we know that there are people that listen. That's mm -hmm. what's important to us. And again, we thank you very, very much for that. And if you okay. are subscribed, thank you. But even still, that, that yeah. really doesn't matter to us. And, and if you're not, you should do it because it's free. yes. I mean, if you're not subscribed, then yes, what the heck are you doing? Subscribe on YouTube and also on Apple, Google, and Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. But that's beside the point. But no, yeah, that that episode where we surprised first to eleven with all their friends and celebrating one million subscribers also was another big deal, especially for them because. I you, I know you saw it, Austin. The look on their faces when they saw who was coming on was just I, I don't think I've ever seen them. I don't think I've ever seen them like like that happy during a podcast interview with us. And the fact that we were able to pull that off for them really it touches me in a way. So it really does mean a lot. 
and I I think I do have one more. Sure. That was our that was the return of the season. The fact that we had nothing to talk about up until two months ago when the season returned was more perfecto. Oh my god. <laughs> talk, talk about impeccable timing on that one, right? <laughs> I mean, because end of last season was really the end of the first season with y'all. So it's like, okay, I enjoyed it. We'll see where it takes us this year. I mean, it's taking us places, man. The, mm. the, you look at what we're doing now and you keep saying it. We keep doing the live streams. The live streams are fantastic. I'm out here live tweeting games when I, yes. I can. And by the way, yes, <clears throat> go follow Austin on Twitter and Instagram if you want live updates on uh, Vegas games, Chicago games, Columbus games, etc. Probably Columbus games tonight. And or it, or Maple Leafs games if you're a Leafs fan for some reason. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just kidding. Wow. I'm just kidding. Throw I'm just kidding. Bus, <laughs> I'm just messing around. But <laughs> and in all seriousness, if you want live updates on certain games in the NHL, go follow this man on Twitter and Instagram at Mr. Taco BLP. You'll get all your live updates on there. I normally don't live tweet games, but if you want to get updates on that, that guy you want to follow. So I'm gonna say, he, I'm he's gonna got say you covered. You, I'm going to say if you want it, just tell Jimmy and he'll, he'll, he'll see what he can do. <laughs> yeah, I'll see what I can do. But keep in mind, I also have another show on the mic with Jay Fizz on the Can You Dig Sports Network, which you should listen to every Saturday from 10 a.m. to 12 noon Eastern time. So, yeah, I got that. I got this podcast. I got Face the Day. I mean, I, I'm I'm doing I'm doing shows like it's no tomorrow here. I'm like, I, I could probably use a break at some point. You know what I mean? <laughs> and I mean, this may not be podcast. This may not be about the podcast. But a big thing that's been really big to me lately is Alex DeBrinkett becoming a father. Oh, yeah. He announced uh, that on Instagram yesterday. Uh, I cried when I saw it. That that that's really that's really amazing. Congratulations to the to the uh, the Brinkett family. That's really amazing. I, that's big. That means we'll probably that means we're gonna have a second generation to Brinkett me and HL. <laughs> hey, you, we just might. You never know. That makes that makes Adam Boquist an uncle. <laughs> oh man, oh man, and I thought we were old. <laughs> Boquist is only 21. What are you talking I'm about? I'm only kidding. My goodness. <laughs> oh my goodness. But uh, no, I mean when you look at when you look at some of the bigger moments sports-wise, there's a, there's definitely two bigger ones that stand out to me because that's just my area. And that was that was Cash for Neves getting his fourth Indy 500 win. Yes. Ma- making history, being yes. one of only three i think it is to have four. i think so yeah which i mean like i said it's history i've always been an elio fan so seeing that was really cool and the team he won for meyer shank racing i've been a fan of theirs since 2017 so it was like everything nice. came full, everything came full circle so <laughs> there you go and then kyle larson winning the cup series championship this year that was another big one for me because yeah I've been, a, I've been a larson fan for a while and i mean i've seen his ups i've seen his downs his downs were definitely last year after he said some certain after he said a certain word yeah we're not gonna go there we're not gonna go there but uh it happened he was forgiven for it he was offered a ride with hendrick and look at what he did with it he took the opportunity came out with nine wins on the season in a championship so i mean i'm not gonna complain Hey, you know what they say? Winning is the ultimate deodorant. So, <laughs> and, and I mean, st- people still hate him. Yeah, well, I've, I mean, look, it's gonna you happen. Hate, but you got haters in the world. That's it. Just keep winning. That's all you can do. But if, if there's one big sports moment that stood out to me throughout this season, is the retirement of Hendrick Lundqvist. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> yes, because. Anyone who knows me know I followed the career of Henrik Lundqvist since he came to the Rangers in 2005. And what he's done 
for that organization for the past 15 years has been nothing short of spectacular. Um, the work that he's done for the Garden of Dreams Foundation, the Henry Lundquist Foundation, just everything that he does for the kids really is remarkable. And if you haven't seen his work, please go look it up for yourself. I promise you it'll be worth your time. And you just see the amount of joy on those kids' faces, meaning potentially they're, they're idle. Like they, they look up to this guy and, you know, Hammond Lundquist resembles, resembles what it means to be a hockey player, not just on the ice, but off the ice as well. He resembles character and we need more players like that in this league. Is it fair to call him the first ballot hall of famer? Oh boy. I mean, first ballot. I hate to say it, but no, he is a hall of famer. He's definitely a hall of famer. He, I doesn't, mean, also, he doesn't have enough credentials to be a first ballot Hall of Famer, at well, least in my opinion. He's going well, to the Hall of Fame, he but not Hall. first ballot. Yeah, but, I mean, if you ask me, he's got enough to be a first ballot with everything. All right, okay, okay. I can, I can see where you're coming from. And but... I mean, you talked about character. Everybody says it. But, I mean, even though we hate the man, Brad Marchand does have a character. No, yeah, no, it, he he does. He does. And, he he and, also he also does a lot for the community. And when he opens his mouth, like he did with the NHL and the whole Olympics thing, I mean, I hate the man to death, but I've never agreed with him more. Yeah, nah, I I I I happen to agree with him too. But, I mean, as, as surprising as that's, I never agree with any Boston player, but that particular and, but thing. But Marshan was like, I mean, he said it perfectly. He's he's like. The only reason the NHL won't let us do this is because they're not getting money out of it. Pretty much. <laughs> and I'm like, and I'm, I'm like, you're not wrong. No, he's he's not wrong. He's not wrong. But no, I mean, Henrik Lundqvist retiring definitely stood out to me. And hey, his retirement ceremony is coming up in, uh, oh. in less than a month. A few short oh. weeks, January 28th against the Minnesota Wild. Sadly, I wish I could be there, but of course, of course, of course it's when but, Zooks is coming back. Yeah, <laughs> it had to be when Zook is coming back. Yeah, you're I mean, right. But um, that's fantastic, though. No, in, in all seriousness, it is. I mean, hey, they've been best friends ever since they both got in the league. So, I mean, I think it would only be fitting that Matt Zuccarello would be there. But again, okay. hey, listen, if you are yeah. going, if you're going to be in the New York area and you're going to that game, have a hit blast. Him. I'm, I'm just going to be watching from home. It's not going to be the same. I wish I could be there, but you know what? I'm still going to experience it anyway, and I'm probably going to have tissues nearby. Me. I, I was going to say, uh, I was going to say, anybody going to that game, hit us up. Uh, me and Jimmy would like uh, some some uh, ceremonial talks. <laughs> yes. If, they, if if anybody can get us the hook up and find us uh, two of the pucks from that night, that'd be fantastic. Oh my god. <laughs> but uh. No, I, I mean this one might be a little more recent within sports because it, because it literally just happened. But Connor Bedard's hat trick, oh in the world, yeah, in the World Juniors, holy crap! Mm. I mean, he didn't. He really wasn't on my radar this year for somebody to watch. And then I mean, sure, it was against Team Austria, who's not, yeah, who, yeah, who's not who didn't look great. But I mean, holy crap! This kid's got talent. It's I know, right? <laughs> it scares me to see somebody with that much talent. I mean, just wait a few years and see him in the NHL playing with the likes of McDavid, Drysaddle, mm. these guys that are younger and are just absolute studs. Absolutely. And speaking of IIHF, just oh, to God. touch on this just just briefly, we're not going to go too deep into it, but. They should the just... fact that it got canceled this year, are you kidding me? Like, that, that's another big thing that stands out to me. The IIHF World Juniors gets canceled altogether? That's For, a joke. Because of four positive COVID cases. Ugh. But yet you look at the NHL's COVID protocol, and we have like 114 players on there right now. And they're still playing! And and, and, and they and, just resume play this week! And they're still playing, exactly. So... It's it's just an absolute disgrace. I'm I'm sorry, Gary Batman pictures. <laughs> Pretty much. I'm trying to think, was there anything else big? I mean, I guess we could talk about Tampa going back to back. Yeah, yeah. I that, mean, that, that was kind of big. As much as, I mean, as much as I didn't 
want it to happen. I mean, it still, it's nice to see a back-to-back Stanley Cup champion for the first time since the 80s when the Islanders did it, so. Well, yeah, but I mean, there was a... Well, I, I mean, really, they, the Islanders won four straight Stanley Cups, That even still. There was, only one, re- there was only one reason I wanted Tampa to win. Pat Maroon. And that was the three-peat for fat Pat Maroon. Like, yeah. <laughs> that man, that hey, man is a, good, good for him, though. Good for that him. That man is a tank. And I swear, if he managed to get, if he manages to get the four peat this year, I will buy a Patrick Maroon jersey. Oh my goodness! Not saying, I, not no, saying, I if, wasn't. If already Tampa Bay about. wins again and Pat Maroon gets his fourth straight Stanley Cup, I think he just retires after that. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 just I, call I, it a career there. You're done. And I mean, as much as we talk about the whole 18 million over cap situation, that if you really think about it, Tampa was smart about it. Because they didn't activate Kucherov off of IR until the, what, the week before playoffs? Yeah, yeah, week before. So that way he was really, like, worked up and was back to normal by the time it was go time. Yes. And, I mean, he's on IR again. And as much as I hate to say it, I think they're going to do it. They're going to use him again like they did last year. They're going to let him rest it up, see what happens. And then, bang, as soon as playoffs come back, he's just going to go off and run it. Yeah. And, I mean, it's the same it's – it's, it's looking like the same thing with Vegas right now. Sure, Alec Martinez had a skate blade cut him in the face. Ooh. And, Ooh. Now they, and now they've put him on long-term IR. But that's money being saved right there from, because of that. When you take that long-term IR – I'm pretty sure if you put him on long-term IR, it cancels the salary. I'm not sure. Ooh. There's, I, so, there's something about money being I, saved. I there. actually didn't know that. Okay. There's something about money being saved there. I think and I forget, <laughs> but it's like the more you know. <laughs> it, but it's like putting Martinez up there. That's I want to say it's like three million dollars or something that we're saving at the moment. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, with the whole taxi squad deal going on right now, it's just everything's been confusing. But it's more of the things that you 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 can use some of these players as secret weapons right now. <laughs> yes yes you like, can vegas is using some of their henderson players who i've got to see play in person which is fantastic so it's like you go and you watch some of these guys play and i, I know robin leonard as of right now is out for some undisclosed thing but yet they've called logan thompson up which is weird <laughs> because what i read is the only reason you can call a goaltender up is if they're dealing with something related to covid Mm, so Leonard's been uh, Leonard's been undisclosed. Thompson came back up. So now we have Brassois and Thompson. Thompson's mm. an absolute stud in net. I love him to death. Brassois, I mean, he looked great for the first for the game against LA just recently, but I mean, he's still got his rough patches. He he, he also looked damn good against the Rangers when they won in the shootout. Ooh, let's not talk about that game, God. <laughs> Hey you! But hey you! Won you won? At least you have something to cheer about. I took you took the one against Chicago. We took the one against you all this time. <laughs> but that one was fair fantastic. enough. Fair enough. It's just it just shows some of these coaches and these owners in this league they're using smart ideas. And as much as I hate to say it, I think Florida might be doing it with Huberto. Mm. I don't I don't know if Huberto's come back yet. I thought he did last night against the Rangers or the he other might, night against the Rangers. I'm sorry. He might have, he might have and I just not pay attention to it. Because, <laughs> it's you know, okay. Yeah, I think they said Huberdo. I think Huberdo. I forget who had COVID. Was it Huberdo or was it? Um, I think it was Ekblad. Oh, it was yeah, Ekblad. Okay. It, okay. Was, Ek, it was Ekblad because Huberdo got injured. I, he had taken him. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you. I, I remember because it hurt my fantasy team a ton. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, we're not going to talk about that. <clears throat> but yeah speaking of speaking of fantasy that's a that's another significant moment for us the fact that we're on a fantasy league with sweethearts even though we're trash we've got off I, I, mean, I don't know how we have the team that we have and we're this bad it's uh, so god awful but there, hey, look, t- we're, we're having easy, fun with it so two easy injuries that injuries and COVID. yeah i mean yeah but, pretty much i mean and as much as i hate to say it more big moments, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Oh, my God. And, sadly. Uh, and was it the, in the Atlanta Braves? 
Yes. That that one yes. that was big. The Atlanta Braves was big. Yes. I was so thrilled that they knocked off the Astros. I was like, please. The trash Astros. Again, the only person on the Astros who I was rooting for is Dusty Baker, their managers. I want that man to get a ring. Just All not right. with the Astros. <laughs> I'm I'm still waiting for that uh Blue Jays ring. It's never gonna happen. <laughs> hey, you we know have, what? You know what? This, it just might. It just might. Have, you never know. We have this team of crushers, and here we are, still <laughs> waiting for that ring. It's, it, at this point, I don't see it happening. Hey, you know what? You might be closer to a championship than the Yankees might be because let's face it, you actually have guys that can hit in timely situations. The Yankees don't. So there's your yeah, argument yeah. right there. The New York Yankees being carried by Aaron Judge. That's not Juan, enough. Not and enough. Juan Carlos Stanton. Also not enough. That's just not enough. You got to have a team well rounded. I mean, yeah. not gonna say, not gonna say the Blue Jays are well rounded either. Because I mean, all we yeah, done, well, we'll I see mean, what we, happens. We'll see what happens when this lockout's over. When it's over, like it's gonna end soon. Yeah. Eh. Whatever, we'll see. Yeah, but, <laughs> I'm trying. Let's see. Is there, were there any other moments? I do. I do have one more moment. I mean, I mean, I get there is one moment I do want to talk about, but I'll let you go first. Okay, fair enough. Um, thank you, by the way. Uh, but no, I think the last mm-hmm. significant moment for me is um, and this is sort of unusual for this type of podcast. Um, but I got to feature, um a couple of pageant queens on here. Um, uh, Crystal Danza, uh, Miss Hudson County International, and uh, one, of my, uh, one of my very dear friends, uh, Jacqueline De Pasquale, a.k.a. Uh, Miss Garden State International 2021. And, you know, I, I wanted to do that because I really wanted to find out more about how the pageant world works, like mm-hmm. what goes on behind the scenes, what they do to get prepared for stuff like this. And there's, there's quite a bit that goes into it. It's a lot of hard work, probably more than you realize. And, you know, Jackie and Crystal were able to uh, break it down for us uh, the best, the best way uh, they can. Again, I may not fully understand it and I do apologize, but I do know a little bit to the best of my ability, but again, just thank you to uh, Jackie and uh, Crystal for, coming on and we will uh, definitely make plans to have you both back on real soon. Love you guys. And uh, thank you very much. But uh, Austin, what's the uh, last moment for you? My last moment involves this guy. Oh yeah. Kiv. And this moment is not his passing. This moment is opening night. Columbus blue jackets. Elvis Merzlikens. Winning it for Kitty. Mm. The, emotion, the emotions that not only I felt, but Elvis felt, the team felt, Kitty's family felt. I mean, it was a ton. And everybody keeps saying it. He was gone. He's gone too soon. Yeah. And it's sadly true. But I mean, you see what Columbus did for him during opening night. They had his family do the ceremonial puck drop. They put a banner up to to represent who he was. They let Elvis wear his number that game. I mean, shit, there was a lot of emotion that game, and I don't know what came into those guys to manage to... I mean, yes, it was the Arizona Coyotes they played opening night, but to pull a game out like that, I think it was like a 7-1 victory or something like that. Yeah. It, like and To pull something like that off on opening night is fantastic and not just to have that but to have the meaning behind it made it even more it was enough to make a grown man cry (laughs) yeah no that was uh that was unbelievable i i do remember watching that game and uh not gonna lie to you i got chills i I got chills i think think everybody who was watching the game got chills not if even if you were even if you weren't in the arena yeah (laughs) that was uh that was yeah. definitely uh, very significant in the hockey world. And uh, yeah, Kiv is uh, 
Kip is still very missed mm-hmm. by everybody. He's, and he's um, still very missed, but he's still very loved by the community. Exactly. Exactly. And I'm I'm very excited to go see his banner in February. Or not February, <laughs> but I'm very excited That's to awesome. go see his banner in March. It's gonna be fantastic. I That's take, awesome. I, I will be taking the jersey with me too. Please, please do. I'm gonna and take the keep, I'm ta- stay I'm, tuned for behind the scenes content on our TikTok, by the way, at Final Line I'm gonna t- I'm I'm probably gonna end up wearing the jersey and seeing if I can get near the ice. Yeah, see there you can, go. I just see if I can get that slight possibility of maybe Elvis throwing up a puck. <laughs> Let's, if I can if I can get an Elvis puck, I will cry. Yeah. I'm just gonna say it now. Hey, I uh, never even, know, my dude. I see because I want to take the Kivy jersey with me, but I also want to take the Boquist jersey with me. Mm, tough choice, tough choice. <laughs> I, I think I think I take them both with me. I think I wear the Kivy jersey on top of the Boquist jersey, and when I see Boquist, I'll take off the Kivy jersey. And... Oh, whatever man. works, whatever it, works. It is whatever. I'm just I'm just thinking now. <laughs> yep, there we go. But anyway, yeah. This is it. This is it for the year for the Bottom Line Podcast. Oh, and one more thing I forgot to add. We are close to 300 episodes, my friends, at the time of this recording. What are you talking about? 300 episodes. No, we're not. Yes, we are. No, we're We're, not. we're under 20 episodes away from 300. Go look on our <laughs> Anchor page. I counted. Oh, okay. It's on Anchor. I was going to say, what are yeah, you talking Anchor. about? Yeah, Anchor.fm, yeah. I was going to say, what are you talking about? YouTube only <laughs> has 126. Well, no, because if you look if you look at the combined episodes from when I started it almost five years ago in 2017, which is another significant moment. Um, so you combine all that from, um, from SoundCloud, from MixCloud, yourlisten.com to anchor.fm to where it is now. And yes, I did count all of them. We are under 20 away from 300. And that's another significant milestone and the fact that we are approaching Did, five years of this podcast. Since I'm holy thinking, crap. <laughs> since I'm thinking about it and we're talking about 300 episodes. What's that? I said, since I'm thinking about it and we're talking about 300 episodes, should we drop that? Should we drop that that, that uh, one announcement? Not yet. No? Not yet. Because it's Not still, yet. it's still, it's almost done, but it's still a work in progress. It's, so it, it, it's, stay it's, tuned. Uh, it's so close to being done, and I've already talked to a few people who want one. Mm, okay, always, okay. I, what I've said is, in the future, once we get there, things will happen. But yeah, we do have we do have a major announcement dropping soon. Once everything is done, so stay tuned. Oh, I'm for... just I'm just waiting for them to get done. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. I, I, I want to see it in my presence. I know you will soon, and so will everybody. So stay oh, tuned for updates. They're gonna have to be worn every episode. <laughs> hey, hey! If that doesn't give you a hint, then I don't know what does. But anyway, again, that'll wrap it up. Five years almost going strong with this show. I mean, you know, the fact that it started off with just me having no clue what the heck I was doing to now where it is now. I mean, just the amount of growth that not only I've experienced, but what Neil has experienced and what this guy next to me also has experienced as well. The growth that we've shown together really is, it really is something. I still miss my banker buddy. Yeah, (laughs) yeah, I miss him too. But hey, he's still still a part of the podcast family always. He he needs to come back. Nah, he'll be be back as a guest. He'll be back as a guest at some point. We'll get him on here. But, I gotta throw I gotta throw devil's shade at him. <laughs> I mean, I can't do that. I can't do that today because uh, and they just come off of a big against. Oh, well, yeah, there you uh, go. Uh, well. But hey, listen, listen, man. Almost three hundred episodes, almost five years strong, and the fact that we have you out there who has been sharing, listening, and watching for these past five years. Thank you so so freaking much if you've been there. Since the very beginning, I'll, I'll definitely have a more detailed um, episode about five years and 300 episodes in the near future. So we'll definitely definitely dive into into that more. But again, if you've been there since the very beginning, 
Thank you so, so much. And if you are new, hey, there's nothing wrong with being new. Welcome aboard. And uh, and thank you. Thank you for uh, taking time out of your day to check this out. It means the world to not just me, but to but to this guy next to me as well. And uh, we got big things coming in 2022. And, and by big things, I mean big, big things. Big. Like, <laughs> big with like three Gs. Yeah. Starting, like starting, starting with the major announcement we're dropping very, very soon. So again, two, uh, stay tuned on, on all social media. We're talking about two big announcements coming soon. <laughs> yes, I did forget. So again, stay tuned. We're gonna have updates how for you, you on everything. How, how do you forget about that other thing? <laughs> it just I slipped. I'm sorry. It just <laughs> slipped. But anyway, listen. This is it for the year for us for the Bottom Line Podcast. Again, if you like what you see or hear, subscribe on our YouTube channel. Hit that bell so you don't miss an episode. And subscribe on all audio platforms. Be sure to include Jimmy when searching for this podcast. Thank you all so, so much for another fantastic year for the Bottom Line Podcast. I know these past couple of years have not been easy for any of us. But, hey, it's a new year. It's a fresh start for all of us. And, again... We got big things coming, so stay tuned. And And Austin and I, thank you so, so much for all of your constant love and support throughout this year. And Mm -hmm. here's to many more years to come, Austin. Thank you so much for being a part of this. Almost a year now, man. It's really hard to believe. And and just remember (laughs) one thing. Yes. I have to go to to Buffalo. (laughs) That will forever be a thing. Yes. Again, here's to many more years. Thank you so, so much for everything. And we are just getting started. For Mr. Taco, I'm Jimmy Finizzi. This is the Bottom Line Podcast. We will see you in the next episode. Peace out, happy new year, and take care of yourselves. 